I will just get started. We'll let some more people trickle in as time goes on. Um, ko Danielle Toko Ingwa. My name is Danielle. I'm the communications manager at Trust Waikato that's been emailing you all about this. Um, thanks for joining us today. Um, Really excited to hear from a few people and I'll just um, start with Karakia and give you a bit of structure. So Karakia Timatanga, e te atua whakatata mai ki a mātou i tēne haoroa. Arahia mātou i o mātou mahi ki a marama ki a tika mō te puinga o te katoa. Amine. Thank you. So um, today we're just going to be starting out with hearing from Dennis um, just around Trust Waikato and why we are initiating the session today. Um, and then we will hear from Rachel, who's the Senior Advisor for Climate Action at Waikato District Council and has got some pretty cool projects on the go. And following that, um, Simon, who is the project manager at Toy2 Carbon Assists, is going to be teaching us on that tool and how it works. Um, if you do have any questions for any of the speakers or just in general, um, you're more than welcome to throw them in the chat function, but we've held this as a meeting rather than a webinar just so that we can actually have korero um, at the end. So if there's things that you're wondering and you are worried you'll forget, um, feel free to type them in the chat and I'll facilitate Q&A at the very end. Um, otherwise, um, yeah, hold the chats and we'll all um, have them from there. And with that, I will pass on to Dennis. Well, thanks, Danny, and uh, welcome everybody. And thank you for making time to come together today um, around this topic of um, you know uh, climate emissions and how they pertain to our own organisations. And Danny, are you driving the presentations and things like that as well? Um, I was going to have everyone do their own, but I can pull yours up if you'd like oh, yeah. me to. Just bear with me. Might be a little bit easier. Um, but while we're getting that, I want to make a shout out to Emma Sinclair from Impact Hub Waikato, obviously having their Climathon event on this week. And I know that it's a busy time for you, Emma. So thanks for uh, taking time to join us today and hope your event goes really well. Um, uh, look, I'll start talking about where Trust Waikato is um, in terms of um, our thinking around climate emissions and climate change and the like. Um, we have done a significant amount of work around understanding our own emissions and thinking about uh, how, uh, what we contribute in terms of our operational work, um, our uh, investment portfolio and our grant making as well. And last year, we also um, published a, a, a statement, if you like, around um, the, uh, sustainability um, and what it means for us uh, in terms of um, uh, where we're going and what we're thinking of doing around uh, a commitment to sustainability and a commitment to climate change. Fundamentally at the heart of our commitment, and it's um, in there in that uh, the last part of the second paragraph is that the effects of climate change will not be felt equally among our community and we need to mitigate the inequality of these impacts. So a just transition is um, front and centre of what we want to be thinking about uh, when we undertake uh, work around climate emissions. Um, however, before we get to that point and whilst we're getting to that point, we have to make sure that our own house is in order. Um, so we did some work around uh, and probably the next slide up would be a good one too, uh, Danny, thank you, um, as a simple framework around how we were thinking about our own operations, certainly around um, commitments that we could make, and recently with others in the community trust um, family around Aotearoa, we've signed up to uh, uh, climate, um, uh, a funders climate action uh, accord, if you like, where there is seven points there that we are aiming to um, meet with our funding commitments. Uh, we've also signed up with our investment portfolio to a commitment to meet a net zero uh, uh, investment portfolio by 2050, if not sooner. We would like it to be much sooner than that, but there is technical and um, uh, technological uh, issues around all that as well. Um, but from an operational point of view, 
We understand the emissions that we produce here in our business at work and all the rest of it. Um, COVID has impacted on that in terms of really making um, uh, a true sense of what our emissions look like. Uh, and whilst they have decreased over the last two years, we expect that they will increase as we all come back into work normal. Um, I just briefly touched on our investment portfolio um, and we um, treat our investment and our grant making emissions as scope three. Um, our investment portfolio, we say that um, uh, we have exclusions around fossil fuels and others that we uh, don't like, but we have to be careful that we don't just sell out of uh, high emitting uh, carbon producing investments that may end up into the private market uh, where they won't change their spots and may not do anything. So there, were, there was no change there. So engagement is high uh, um, in, in terms of our thinking around our investment portfolio as well. But it's our grant making that we're here to talk about today. And we understand that by um, granting to our community that there will be emissions that should be and uh, should be attributable to uh, Trust Waikato in terms of the work that you are doing and the emissions that you produce. Um, and we're willing to understand those and take action against that. Uh, fundamentally, um, we think that we should play a role in um, uh, those emissions uh, and reductions um, and offsetting if need be as well. Um, and simplicity, sim um, simplistically, what we're saying here is that uh, if an organization's revenue is $10,000 and we grant $1,000 to that organization uh, with 10% of the revenue, well, we should be um, taking account of 10% of the emissions that you produce. You know, a real you know, blunt uh, measure there, but one that we think is in the ballpark and, and one that should we, we should be looking at. But fundamentally, and I wonder if we go back to the full screen, Danny, thanks. Um, um, so stop the sharing. Um, fundamentally, we um, um, believe that um, there is an op opportunity here for a collaborative approach to a reduction uh, plan and you know, collective action around that um, makes more sense than all of us trying to do it individually. Um, so um, we, we've employed um, uh, Toitu, Simon Anderson from Toitu, um, and Aki Fenua is here to talk about that, and uh, Rachel Goddard will talk about further support that we have there. Last year, we ran a pilot around this with a carbon assist tool with Toitu. 17 organisations participated in that, um, used the tool to assess their own emissions, uh, and all that information is shared back with us. And then from that, we can make um, judgment calls in terms of, as I said before, as a percentage of revenue, what um, emissions should be attributable to us. But what that really pointed out to us at Trust Waikato is that there is an opportunity here to do a lot around uh, a collective approach to uh, reduction. And that's something that we're really interested in. We understand that there is need for support around this as well. And Rachel will talk about that. Um, so we're not expecting um, organisations to muddle through what is a real complex area. Um, you know, it starts out being quite complex, but um, we need just to do something. And so there is opportunity for uh, one hour workshop support for us collectively to understand how we can uh, think about reduction. Uh, and the final point I want to make is that um, we, we won't get it perfect first time and, and um, that um, we will continually look to improve an approach. Um, so where we are today won't be where we are next year. But if we take that iterative approach um, and an improvement approach, uh, and again, collectively, then we should be doing something uh, meaningful. Um, and I do say that this is a full purpose approach uh, to uh, and a regional approach to um, emissions, uh, but it could be that it filters into a uh, for-profit approach too, where we can build a picture of emissions in the Waikato by sector, uh, by organisation, and take collective action uh, across quite a large uh, range of organisations within the Waikato as well. So, uh, you know, the opportunity is not to reinvent wheels, but to use tools and support that's out there already. And Danny, I want to stop it there because um, yeah, I'm sick of my own voice and I'm picture everyone else's, and I'd rather hear from Simon and Rachel as well. Great. Um, Rachel, you are up next. Are you all right sharing your presentation or would you like me to put it up for you? 
Um, possibly me, then I can hopefully control it. I'll just try and put it up and we'll see if everyone can see it. Oh, no, you've disabled sharing. So maybe you need oh, to put it up. <laughs> Let me see if it lets me. Thanks, maybe you're going to introduce yourself while we're waiting for that. Absolutely. Um, kia ora tato, um, ko rahera Rachel Goddard Toko Ingoa, um, no um, Ingarangi Eirangi Aho. I'm blessed to call Fangaroa Raglam my home. I've lived here for 18 years, but not quite a local. Apparently, it's 20 years um, before you're a local, so I'm nearly there. Um, and I've worked in the sustainability sector for almost 30 years, which is extraordinary because I'm only 35. So I just, yeah, I don't quite know how that happened, but, you know, um, and it's curious because, um, you know, a few years ago, sustainability was still sort of perceived to be a bit of a wishy-washy, greeny, hippie word. And then it sort of became used in everyday conversation. Um, but even recently I had someone say, oh, you work in the sustainability sector. Do you do like recycling? I was like, gosh, okay, so yeah, maybe it hasn't quite filtered <laughs> out to everyone. Um, but I kind of feel like sustainability is being superseded by climate change now. And I think maybe because it's more uh, real, more urgent, more tangible. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Thank you. So, Danny, you have to control this. So maybe if I raise my hand, you can flick a slide on. Is that cool to do that? Yes, sweet is. Beautiful. So... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you all know the, the global situation. It's pretty grim. Um, and I know this because I read a lot of reports and research um, and, I, and I live and breathe this stuff. I, I am the uh, Senior Advisor for Climate Action at Waikato District Council. And, you know, given the global situation and the New Zealand government commitment towards reducing CO2 emissions um, by 50% by 2030, that's an incredibly uh, ambitious goal. And I'm predicting that other sectors will have to start to step up to deliver on that. We cannot do this in isolation. It's not just going to work if the government goes, okay, we're just going to have this one program here. Really, we all collectively need to step up and actually start to track our emissions, set reduction plans and targets and have some collective action in the region. So the reason this program came about is because, to be honest, we have a lack of of experts in the sector um, in the Waikato region. We seriously do not have uh, hardly any um, uh, climate uh, experts um, that can actually deliver a program like this. I can, I can think of maybe four of us in the region that can do this. So it's sort of like a two pronged approach. Um, I came up with the concept. I uh, went to Go Eco, the fabulous Go Eco, um, and had a korero with them about the program. Um, and said, you know, imagine if we could train a load of advisors in the region to help small to medium enterprises, charities, NGOs, for profit, you know, get on this journey um, and and um, develop this this pilot. And Go Eco were very supportive. We, um, you know, mapped it out, had to think about what it would look like, how it might work, and we put in a funding application to the Waikato Regional Council through the EIF fund, and they funded it which was really cool we were really excited about that they said it was the best funding application they'd seen so we we're really super pleased about that um and so now we're at the stage where we're starting to think about how we develop the program and how it will be rolled out to support um small to medium enterprises to get on the journey so danielle can you see me waving sorry <laughs> thank you so i mean i'm sure we've all seen the media i mean climate change is all over the news now it's every day we're seeing reports we're seeing you know hottest temperatures ever heat waves wildfires um it's it's here and it's happened much more rapidly than we had anticipated and i have to say it's pretty grim it's it's not great um the ipcc that's the intergovernmental panel for climate change which is a un body it has 63,000 people that review scientific papers and citations, and they're saying it's not looking good, people. We have a very tiny, tiny window in which to act before we breach 1.5 degrees, which is the maximum temperature we really should increase by. So it's not looking great, and we seriously need to do everything that we can um, to somehow curb, curb this. Thanks, Dania. So just a few stats and figures. So since um, the Industrial Revolution, 
CO2 has gone up by 50%. So it is anthropogenic. It is um, man-made, as, as they like to say, um, even though some people still debate that. I'm not here to debate that. We know that it's happening. Um, and we also know that the increase in natural disasters is phenomenal. It's actually tripled in the last 30 years. So it's really seriously happening. Um, and we can see the effects around us. I know here in Whangaroa, all of my neighbors' properties have been flooded, seriously flooded in the last five years um, to the point where it's unlikely they'll be able to get insurance. So in terms of infrastructure, health, biodiversity loss, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty impactful. So between 2006 and 16, the um, sea level rise globally was two and a half times quicker than it was for the entire 20th century. So if you can imagine a person standing up that the water has risen about 20 centimeters so if you can imagine the water rising it's about halfway up to their calves and it's happened very quickly in, in less than 100 years so we know we know this is happening um and unfortunately this this magic number 1.5 degrees is highly likely that it will be breached in the next 10 to 20 years so that's that's the report the consensus from ipcc so it's looking a little uh, concerning. I, would, I shouldn't say little, I'm trying to not panic everyone here. I don't want people to get paralyzed and that's the other thing. I still want people to have hope and know that they can do something about it, but it's looking not great. Um, therefore, we really seriously need to act. Thanks, Danielle. So in terms of what the New Zealand government has committed to, initially they said, well, will reduce emissions by 30%. And then at the COP26 conference in Glasgow last year, which is a climate change conference, they actually strengthened that to 50%. So that's an incredibly ambitious goal that this whole country needs to halve its carbon emissions by 2030. That is a very small time and it's gonna need collective action from all sectors, bottom down, top up, all of it to actually make that happen. So if you think about, you know, the plastic bag, um, it was probably, I don't know, about three or four years ago, Colmar Brunton put a poll out and asked New Zealanders what was their biggest concern. And I thought, oh, it's going to be, I don't know, crime or poverty or literacy or something. No, it was the plastic bag. That was number one concern for New Zealanders, which is kind of curious, but, that kicked off and there's this huge groundswell, there were schools involved, um, petitions, and that went up to the government and then the government said, we're banning plastic bags. And that's how things happen. I really think it's driven from the community, grassroots level, it goes up, it has that impact, and then the government make the legislation to actually make things happen. So I kind of think it's a similar thing with climate change and it's gonna have to be met um, in the middle by both sides. So there's numerous acts, you know, there's the Carbon Zero, the Zero Carbon Act, there's Carbon Neutral Program where um, public sector crown entities have to get on board with tracking emissions and verification. Um, it's, it's highly likely that the government will adopt the Climate Change Commission's um, recommendations. Um, and we've got an emission budget coming out, I think in May this year. Um, so Things are in the pipeline, they're slower than we had expected, but they are happening. And like I said before, I suspect that a, a number of sectors will be asked to step up and start reporting and tracking and benchmarking their emissions. Thank you. So why do it? I probably have covered a lot of it already. You know, there's the urgency with global warming. There's a mandated targets and, and international commitments from the government. There's an obligation that you could say it's a moral imperative that, you know, we have a duty um, to protect this planet. It's the only one we've got. And what are our children going to inherit in the future? Um, it's about modeling good behavior. It's good community practice. Um, it's about having collective action. It's about making behavior change. You know, it's, it's delivering on targets that have been set. And it's about fixing broken models, um, which I won't go into, but that's just, just a point there. Thanks, Danielle. So essentially, what, what is this program? I sort of touched on it at the start. It's, it's different to other, um, it's not a, it's, it is not a carbon calculator. It utilizes carbon calculators, but it's not a carbon calculator. It's more about building capacity and capability in the region. It's about training up community groups and virus centers and their staff to actually deliver this into small to medium enterprises. That's the big difference. So it's about helping the community build that resource and it's also helping charities, NGOs, schools to get on that journey because many of them cannot afford a consultant or an expensive program 
and that's the big, big difference. So essentially, um, what will happen is um, uh, someone will uh, put in an expression of interest and they will say, we'd love to you know, come on board with this program, this pilot, and they would be assigned an advisor who would assist them to get onto that journey to help them benchmark, track their emissions, set reduction plans. There'd be templates on you know, sustainability plans, um, uh, carbon reduction plans, and it's an assisted program where staff are helped and upskilled and hopefully trained to do this themselves in the future for, you know, continuity. Thanks, Danielle. So I think I've probably covered a little bit of that slide already. Um, I think I've said all of that already, but also I guess what I'm interested in you know, is that the actual the sharing of this information, the sharing of the resources that, you know, I'm not, or should I say we, Go Eco and I are not going to be precious about holding on to this stuff. We want everyone to get on board with this. It will be free at this stage, we think. Um, it depends on the funding. Um, and we want people to get on board and get on that journey. So the steps. At this stage, we've established a working group. We're going to develop the program and content, workshop modules. We'll take expressions of interest from people that would like to be involved in the pilot. We'll train up advisors in the community, and then the pilot will be offered to organizations over a number of sessions. And outcomes, we're looking at, you know, collective action. We want some meaningful impact because it's all good and well, you know, for people to make commitments and pledges, but they don't mean much without impactful, meaningful, real action and, you know, working together collectively. Um, you know, we want, we have to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. There's no doubt about that. Um, and what it, what's already up there is going to stay up there for a while. So even if we act now, there's going to be a lag time because we've already created those gases. They're already up there doing doing their thing, unfortunately. Um, so it's you know it's about good practice. It's about having a regional impact. It's about so, you know even house organisations. You know that and there's expectations in the future that you may you may actually need to do this. It's good for PR. It's good for you know reputation and and all those things as well. Thanks, Danielle. So this ties in really nicely with another project that we're working on um, with Waikato Plan and, and Jennifer Nickel, who's one of the councillors at WRC. We're wanting to do a stock take across the whole region to get an understanding of what people are doing, because people are doing some great mahi and we don't know exactly what everyone's doing. Everyone's sort of off doing things in silos. We kind of want to bring everything together in like a portal and do like a stock take right across different areas from Kai to uh, waste, water, energy, travel, um, and then within the different sectors, schools, education, um, community groups to, to get a really good sense of what everyone's doing. And that portal will be a place where people can connect, they can um, collaborate, you know, maybe on, on a, a project or a funding application, there's synergies, there'll be resources. And also it has the ability um, to gather data so we can actually understand what our impact is, you know, what emissions are we reducing um, and have all that data in one place. So that's kind of um, what we're aiming for at the moment. So I think there's only one slide left, is there? Oh yes, look at that, beautiful. Um, do, do we wanna take questions now or at the end? I don't wanna cut into Simon's time. Yeah, we'll take all the questions at the end, please. Oh, thank you. Cool. All right, Simon, um, thanks for that, Rachel. If you are able to share, let me know. If not, I'll get yours up. Um, I can share, so, yep. Um, Beauty. Yeah, leave that with me. Well, kia ora, everyone. Um, I'm Simon Enders. I, I work for a, an organisation called um, uh, Toy2 Envirocare, and um, we are owned by um, Manaki Whenua, Landcare uh, Research. Um, New Zealand um, and we develop um, uh, programs for measuring um, carbon um, for verifying the results um, of those um, and for um, you know offsetting and, and insetting the kind of uh, the emissions that are identified. Now can everyone see my screen? Great. Thank you very much. So what I'm going to do, we have a, um, a product called Toy2 Carbon Assess, um, which is uh, one of the ones we offer. And, and um, as Dennis uh, touched on at the beginning, this was something that we've trialed um, with Trust Waikato. So I'm gonna give a bit of an intro uh, to the product and, and its purpose and, and how it works meeting um, 
um, you know, organisations like Trust by Cato as, as well as their fundees uh, needs. Um, and then I'm going to um, show a couple of videos of just how simple it is to use, you know, just how simple. Because, um, uh, you know, there's, you know, one of the things um, often with, with carbon and carbon emissions and climate change is there's this whole new lexicon that comes in and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of easy to think sometimes that, you know, this is, this is way too um, complex and, and scientific. But, yeah, you know, like um, um, taking some simple actions around measuring it is, is, is not too difficult difficult as I'll hopefully show, hopefully show. All right, um, so uh, moving along. Um, so what is Toy2 Carbon Assess, this product that I'm going to talk about? Um, it's, it's basically a, a quick, um, affordable, um, um, non-certified, um, uh, but uh, for measure that helps um, small organizations um, measure carbon emissions in kgs of, of CO2 equivalents. Um, it uses um, Ministry for the Environment factors. So um, the Ministry for the Environment issues um, a kind of a guide that says, all right, for every uh, litre of petrol you put in, um, in, your, in your car, um, for um, every kilowatt of electricity, this is the related carbon that kind of comes out of it. So uh, Ministry of, for the Environment has, has guidance on this and Carbon Assess uses that um, to help people um, measure um, their kind of material um, elements of, of their operations um, uh, relative to producing carbon. And those are electricity, um, fuel, travel, freight, and waste. So by material, we mean, you know, these are the most, um, um, uh, the most important elements of it, the most, the most measurable, the largest producers of carbon within your operations. You know, there are other ones that produce it, but, you know, these are the big ones. Um, and once someone, a small organization such as a fundee, um, uh, has gone through and measured um, their, uh, their carbon, they can share it with larger um, stakeholders uh, who get a kind of collated file of, of all that data. You know, and, and larger organizations like um, Trust Waikato or um, potentially in the future, um, uh, Waikato uh, Regional Council or City, you know, like um, Hamilton City Council, so on and so forth. So if anybody, you know, asks you for your, um, your carbon data or your emissions, um, the organization has done it, has got a, you know, a, a good basic um, a measurement of, of what they do in, in running, um, uh, you know, the trust or a charity, um, uh, what in that produces carbon. And, you know, for, for larger organizations like Trust Waikato, it, it kind of really simplifies the process of, of capturing this information. Um, and, and Dennis touched on, you know, like, you know, one of the, I suppose, onuses and responsibilities on, on uh, Trust Waikato is if it's going to fund the good work that, that you all do within your communities, um, is to support you um, in making sure that, you know, that, that, that they, those good works don't have a, a too negative um, um, Kind of outcome relative to carbon emissions in the planet. So it gives them um, the data so that everyone can work together to look how they can um, mitigate and, and lessen those. And, and, you know, a great example could be around that, um, that, you know, within Hamilton for um, the organizations that work with Trust Waikato, um, it identifies that um, a petrol or diesel is, is the biggest emitter um, then, you know, working with fundies around how can we lower that, you know, get um, EVs and, and hybrids involved to bring that figure down, you know, just as an example around that. All right, so um, uh, this is um, to the right, there's a, a screenshot um, of um, Toy2 Carbon Assess, um, uh, the dashboard for it, it shows um, uh, carbon, the carbon data after an assessment's been done, but kind of focuses on, on these five kind of critical areas, electricity, um, fuel, um, travel, um, freight, and waste, because in any organizations, those five are the big ones. They're the ones that produce the most um, carbon. Um, it's kind of factored on revenue, and, and why this is done, as Dennis um, touched on, is um, what it allows an organization to do is to say, all right, well, for every um, uh, dollar that we've been funded or fundraised, um, this is the related amount of carbon for every $1,000. So 
if an organization like Trust Waikato says, all right, great, well, we funded um, uh, the organization for $10,000, they can then calculate to say, all right, our share of the carbon or what we're contributing to it is this amount. So that's why we use that. And um, up to five years worth of data um, can be entered, um, up to five years of assessments can be entered in that. Um, out of it, you get this um, kind of snazzy report, um, which you can put up um, on the wall. Um, when we were building the product, um, I had uh, kind of this uh, romantic vision of a fish and chip shop, if you can have a romantic vision of a fish and chip shop. But I imagine the owner um, would have their certificate up on the wall and, you know, why the chips and potato fritters were cooking, um, they were pointing out, yeah, you know, this is our assessment for the electricity out of our store, you know, the, the carbon coming out of our store. And look, this is how we compare, you know, within sector to other fish and chip shops. So, you know, you know, you're in a fish and chip shop uh, that's um, made some efforts to lower its carbon. And you can see, you know, how we've done compared to, you know, the last period that, you know, we've brought certain things down. Um, like our fuel use, because, you know, we've got an electric van, um, but you can see that's brought our electricity up a little, you know, so um, that's the idea around it. And, you know, kind of relates to fish and chip shops in a sense as well, because we want it to look a bit like a hygiene certificate, you know, it's up on the wall, you can, you know, you can get the carbon hygiene out of that. And um, so it's a great, you know, visual way of seeing uh, where you're standing, how you've done compared to last period, you know, um, touching on what some of the things Rachel was talked about. Maybe you measured the first year, uh, you made a plan and you made some reductions, then you'll be able to see how you compare to that in the following year. Uh, so really kind of useful information coming in there. Um, and in it as well, is you're able to share that data with, um, you know, your larger stakeholders who are interested. So if you use this tool to do an assessment, um, you would enter um, the stakeholder like Trust Waikato's um, account number into that um, and share the data. And that means the carbon data out of your report would be um, shared um, off to um, uh, Trust Waikato, which kind of makes it easy for you, you know, and makes it easy for Trust Waikato as well to kind of collate that data. Um, and all right, so that's uh, all, the, all the talking that I'm going to do about. Well, I, I will add some comments as, as we go through the videos, but I'll show a couple of videos. One, um, how uh, how to join, um, and then two, a kind of um, a quick video on on doing an assessment. You know how you enter that data in. All right, now hopefully uh, what I've done is I've shared um, sound. Um, I'll start one of the videos and. Um, if it um, doesn't come through, um, uh, give me a quick um, shout and we'll see what we can, uh, maybe we'll have to reshare to do that. Now, is sound coming through then? No. All right. Well, I'm going to reshare and I'll make sure I share sound this time. Uh, and share screen, um, share sound. That's what I want. Go back to the beginning and I'll click play. Once you've made the decision, subscribing is easy. Perfect. Enter your first name, last name, email address, and a strong password. Read and check the terms and conditions and then press next. Then tell us a little about your organization, its name, industry, sector, and how many years you've been in business. Finally, we'll give us some payment information. If you have one, start by entering and applying a discount code. Then enter your credit card details. Note that this card will be used for your reoccurring monthly payments. Press next and then as the message says, fantastic, you're all set up. Brilliant. So as, as a, um, a first video, you know, it's 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 like all the things we sign up for on online now. It's kind of relatively straightforward um, to get onto the tool. And Trust Waikato um, does have a discount um, and a discount code available to its fundees. Um, now I'm going to show um, a second video um, on um, how you can do your first ass assessment. When you are ready to start your first assessment, click Start Assessment. The first action is to set the yearly reporting period. We recommend you align it to your financial reporting period and the latest complete year, so as you have all the data required to complete your first assessment. 
the second action is to enter gross revenue for the assessment period. This is used to factor total carbon emissions to show the intensity of your carbon use, allowing you to compare one year to another. Electricity is entered in kilowatt hours. This data can be found on your electricity bills. Enter each bill individually or as a single total figure for the year, remembering to press add entry as you go. Fuel comes in many types, including petrol, diesel, LPG, natural gas and coal. Make sure you enter them all. Some, like petrol, can be entered using different measurements depending on the data you have. While dollar amounts are often the easiest measurement data to locate, it cannot always be used due to price variations. Coal is an example of this. Fuel is most often the biggest producer of emissions as it is created directly from carbon. Air travel and accommodation are the material producers of travel carbon emissions. Calculate the kgs of CO2 equivalents for air travel using our travel calculator. The emissions from air travel can be sizable for many organisations, so make sure you record them all. Carbon emissions from landfill waste are only material if you have a waste disposal contract. Getting data in kgs or metres cubed can be challenging. If not present on your bills or contract, we suggest speaking to your provider. If they are not forthcoming, see the help document for calculations. Freight is only material if you spend over $6,000 on it annually. Tons kilometres can be challenging data to find. See the help document if required. Now that you've entered data for revenue, electricity, fuel, travel, waste and freight, you can click publish. Well done, you've created your first carbon emissions assessment. Note the data displays changes to carbon intensity. Click download to get a printable PDF report of the assessment. Brilliant, so that's, um, I'll stop sharing them. So, um, when we built Toy2 to Carbon Assess, we, we wanted to build a, a kind of usable, suitable um, product for, um, for calculating emissions for small organizations. So we've tried to make it as user friendly and, and similar to, you know, like some of the, you know, everyday digital applications we use, like, you know, like um, internet banking or um, booking a flight. Um, and so, yeah, we, we've tried to put that emphasis on there. And, and as well, you know, why we realized um, it may not pick up, you know, every bit of carbon um, in your organization produces, it picks up the major ones, which is um, the critical thing that um, we're, we're looking at there. So, um, so, you know, I think, you know, relative to um, the, 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 the trust trial, um, people had a generally a positive experience, you know, um, some of us are more technically savvy than others. Um, but uh, yeah, it's certainly designed for the most people, you know, rather than rather than the few. So, yeah, that's um, that's me. I'll hand it back to you, Danielle. Awesome, thank you, Simon. Um, so now we can go ahead and do our Q and A's. Um, if you've got a, a question that you want um, directed towards someone in particular, or just that you have in general for. Um, the three others to pipe in on, um, feel free to go off mute and yeah, we can have a discussion. So don't, don't be shy. That's why we're, we're doing this in this format is to actually just have, have an actual quarter together. Danny, maybe if I can make a couple of comments around the tool and because there's so many calculators out there and they're all work and all do a great job. What we found with Toy2 was that, that that sharing ability took out quite a number of steps when we're trying to think about um, how to calculate a total uh, emissions attributable, attributable to our grant making. Uh, that was something that most other tools didn't have. And then the, the ability to then compare using that kilograms of CO2 per dollar of review, um, I think it was Simon, um, also that the ability to um, compare uh, was interesting as well when we're thinking about where are the high emitters, what is the type of a of um, 
uh, where are the emissions coming from and therefore how can we think about collective action around that. So those were some of the things that steered us towards uh, uh, Toy 2 in particular. Uh, we do know that there is a cost to it, um, but we also know that there's a cost to climate change or not doing anything around climate change. So we thought that at $30 a month plus our discount, which is never small and never big enough, Simon, but we'll try to <laughs> get later. See if we can uh, improve that, you know. Yeah. That's right. Um, that discounted price um, doesn't add up too much uh, on an annual basis, but provides a real rich uh, opportunity for, for the sector, the full purpose sector within the Waikato as well. Mm. So hopefully people have thought about questions and, and can come in. Can yeah, I start? Oh, yeah, I've got a question when you're ready. Oh, yes, please, please. Yeah. Um, so two questions. First is for Dennis. Is it, you may not be able to answer this straight off, but is it likely that this is going to become a requirement of future grant or funding beneficiaries that we are having a serious um, sustainability climate change recycling policy, whatever we call it? Um, and then the second question is in terms of that ongoing um, uh, support to improve. So our carbon footprint here is actually quite low when we, we, we went through this process already last year. But, you know, there's always room for improvement. So I'm interested to get some best practice and see what else we could be doing. So what, what could be helpful would be a toolbox of things that might be beyond the obvious so yep. my two yeah first up susan um we've um we've gone for the opt-in option uh, at the moment mm. um with a view that um we don't want to use the sledgehammer to do this we want to get the coalition of the willing um and go from there um who knows in the future what that may look like it may be that actually action is required uh at a faster rate and it could be that uh, uh it needs to be part of the mix but that's not the thinking at the moment and i don't think it will be for the next few years anyway okay. um, i also take your point around um you're a small organization and the emissions might not be that great but uh collective action is around harnessing um, the minds of people uh, mm. and a small organization might have the brightest mind and great ideas and that really is the the key I think to this is that everyone has uh, equal input into uh, opportunities to reduce and I'm really interested in that. Thanks. Sharon. Well, you're just on mute. Hi, I noticed, um, Simon, that you said that it's non-certified. Is, is it likely to change so that it becomes a, a certification process? Yeah, so um, we are working on making, you know, um, making the figures that come out um, uh, more well, certified to a degree, certified to a point of, of suitability, um, uh, I suppose would be um, the better way um, to maybe term it. And by that, I mean, for our larger program, they come out with a, an ISO level certification, which basically means, you know, it's a, to a high scientific level, um, um, which you know, for very large admitters or, or for people wanting to make very kind of strong claims, um, you know, that, that's really important. You know, um, for maybe smaller organizations, um, it's around um, maybe working with a larger organization like Trust Waikato, the data that you're passing to them strengthens the claims that Trust by Caddo is, is, is making about those. So um, our focus for the SME tool is to say, hey, this is a, um, uh, this if it was added to someone using a larger inventory um, and wanting to make an ISO level claim around it, then it would meet that. So that's what we're kind of working towards. 
Um, you know, like often people come in and, and, you know, a lot of people speak to Toy2 and they say, well, I want to be able to say that um, I'm zero carbon um, or, you know, this is net, you know, like um, zero carbon um, organization. And I think, you know, often for smaller organizations, um, um, and, you know, an example of that is we got a, um, approached from a, um, a, um, a football club who said we want to be the first, you know, like a carbon neutral football club in Wellington. Um, so um, around um, saying, well, you know, maybe the, the best aim for you is not to do that. Maybe it is to focus in on, you know, how do you get um, kids to games? You know, like, uh, you know, uh, how do we approach that? How do we plan? How do we, we take those actions? And, you know, to make a claim on that rather than the fact that, you know, you're net neutral as, as an amount of emissions. So, um, so yeah, you know, you can, you know, we do have um, kind of social tiles and, and you know, um, um, banners that you can use associated with, um, um, with carbon assess. Um, but um, in some ways, they're kind of the slightly lighter claim. So, you know, we're looking to, we're measuring our carbon, you know, rather than we've measured it to, you know, um, an absolute. Um, and we're taking action, I think is often what, you know, people expect from smaller organizations. So, so hopefully I answered your question. I kind of rambled on a wee bit there, but um, hopefully that answered your question, um, Sharon. I think that was my, uh, uh, my original point was um, we're not going to get it 100% right, um, but Toy Tour is a credible organization. You know, um, uh, Manaki Whenua behind it uh, does a lot in this area. So there is some credence to what they do um, and the opportunity, if you're a high emitter, to get, to get all that work certified is there in another format as well. But we might get it 90% right pretty happy with that so long as we're doing something about it as well. I've got a question from Vicky who's kindly put her hand up. Hi, um, I'm Vicky, I'm from Citizens Advice. I was just wondering if if there were any advisors or assessors that we could get in touch with to start this process properly because um, you know we're a small organization under the umbrella of a national one. Uh, we report, I report to a board and I'd be really interested in starting this process, but I, I kind of want someone who would almost provide um, structure and where to start. And then it would it would also make sure this was a priority because I know a lot of managers out there, we start off with really good intentions, but then six or seven things come across our desk. Yeah. Before I hand over to the others, um, in our pilot and um, Toy2, uh, the tool comes with uh, support um, as well. Um, in our pilot, um, a question was asked, was uh, support adequate uh, for uh, the tool and all the rest of it? And that came uh, across as a strong yes. Um, so there is um, uh, support from Toy2, albeit um, by email, Simon, or? Yeah, yeah. Uh, email and, and uh, you know, like um, um, eight by five, so, you know, five days a week during business hours. Um, but uh, yep. yeah, yeah. Um, and then the work that Rachel was doing with Joe from GoEco around advisors into this um, topic uh, is one where, again, that's of interest where there could be a face-to-face -face someone alongside uh, that assists and, and helps out as well. Uh, and I think, Rachel, that was your presentation and around that and, and, and your, your goal with Joe from GoEco. Is that right? Uh, head nodding. So yeah, we're trying to build all that in, Vicky. That's the that's the goal. We've got another question through the chat function, and um, that's asking why focus on carbon. What about other emissions such as methane? Good question for me, I think. Um, so methane is a much stronger greenhouse gas. You are correct. It's It's got far higher um, global warming potential than CO2. However, CO2 is more prevalent. There's more of it. Um, and also CO2 lasts longer in the atmosphere as well. So there's numerous greenhouse gases. There's, there's actually water vapor is a greenhouse gas. So there's nitrous oxide is the strongest one of all. But usually our emissions are only around 5%. So they don't tend to, to 
bring that into the equation. CO2, it's kind of curious because they call CO2 carbon now. And it's like, that's not technically correct because we're all made of carbon. You know, carbon is the backbone of us. It's in everything. It's actually CO2 or, or green or um, carbon dioxide gas, but we've just shortened it to carbon. Um, so to answer that question more thoroughly, the, Simon mentioned it. CO2e is usually the measurement that they use. And CO2e means carbon dioxide equivalent as a measurement to collectively bring all the greenhouse gases together. So when you do your calculations, it should actually include all of them um, together. Is that correct, Simon? I'm assuming that's what TOTU does? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, you know, like, um, yeah, equivalence is the, the idea of, well, you know, rather than split them out, let's bring them back to a, a common measurement that everybody you know, can then gather around. Um, and um, for, um, you know, for sectors uh, that are a bit more, um, uh, you know, we have a tool focused on, on, on farms and, and, you know, um, which kind of really gets into the methane, you know, especially relative to, you know, New Zealand, um, to agriculture. Um, so, you know, even down to, you know, like, and there's some incredible detail that it goes to around, you know, like what type of animal and what's its age and what's its eating, you know, like, uh, so um, if, if you are in, you know, sectors like farming, you know, we have other products that are more focused in that area. I'm a pretty simple soul, so I want to keep it simple. So that's what I'm Carmen. I think Lee had her hand up too, uh, Danny. Oh, um, yep. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm Lee Major from Tui Trust in Hamilton. Um, great work. Thank you, um, everybody. And that uh, app looks really good. We've registered already, so the next step is to do that. Um, fill out the information, just a very small question. If you're in a shared space, office space, or working from home, how do you accurately uh, assign the power content to that app? How would you figure that out so it would be close to accurate? Yeah, I, I suppose it's really, um, you know, for a lot of organisations, it's, it's, you know, what percentage maybe they would be yeah. paying of that. You know, like, mm. so if, if the organization's paying the electricity bill, then, you know, then it's all theirs. Or if they're saying it, they'll pay a percentage of it, you know, for, for say, may some, someone working from home, um, then, you know, that, that's a good way to do it, you know. Um, um, other, I suppose, it's, it's just really comes down to what you think is attribable and fair. Yeah. So, you know, like, um, if... You know, you're using, um, um, you know, one um, room in, in the house or a part of a room, um, you know, for five days a week, you know, just what, it, you know, we don't have to, you know, as long as you feel it's a feel, fair attribution, mm. then, you know, that's that's a good way to go for it. But if you're paying a bill um, on, on behalf of, of someone, then, yeah, that, that's a really solid guide as well. Would be 100%. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Thanks, Simon. And we've got a question from Joe. Go. Ah, kia ora tato. Um, I just wanted to add in from a from a community organisation perspective that um, even uh, like for us as an environment centre and um, and a, a group of people who advise people about these things, um, we underwent this. Um, Toy to process um, to, to formalize our own data. And, and from that, it has been um, an opportunity for us to look at what works in an operational setting for community organizations and, and you know, for purpose businesses um, and organizations. And um, and that's that's one of the things that we look forward to, to doing with people within the pilot is supporting some innovation. And at the moment, we're piloting a couple of ideas amongst our own teams to see if they make a difference, short, small, informal pilots um, around behaviour change. Because for us as an organisation, behaviour change has been um, the thing that we have actually had to work on and nail. And um, we suspect that for all the good intentions of our colleagues in the sector, it'll be very similar um, for everybody. So, you know, it ties to our workplace cultures, the way we work, the passion we do our, our work with, and, um, and how we um, innovate 
to to make some behavior change and um so i really do hope that people want to join the pilot um because yeah it's going to be fun i'm sure awesome thanks joe um i've just got one last question through the chat which um, might be more rachel directed but open to other feedback um what is a recommendation for three things that the regular person could do to help contribute positively towards climate crisis. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, funnily enough, I've created a wee resource about that. It's a beautiful PDF and it's called How to Lower Your Carbon Footprint. And it's got things around waste, water, energy, kai, travel, and it's, it's free. It's on the Waikato District Council website. If you go on there, just tap in climate action and you can read the web page if you like, but scroll down to the bottom and there's a whole series of resources on how to green up your organization in 12 steps, how to reduce your carbon footprint. God, I sound like a real salesperson here, don't I? Join up now. It's free. Um, and there's some really cool tips and things on there. So you are welcome to go in there and utilize it, take anything out of there. But to answer your question... The number one, well, in fact, I hate to say this, number one thing is actually having children. So I'm not going to even go there. Number two is actually flying. Um, and COVID's kind of put a bit of a eat on that. So that's not so bad. But flying is a massive one. Um, yeah, travel, car travel is a huge one. But, you know, don't, don't overthink it. Just do something. It doesn't really matter because if you do just one thing it leads to another thing and then eventually you know we have this collective action where we're all doing stuff together um you know in our household here i sort of i proudly announced the other day that we are a pure ev family we have no diesel no fossil fuel and i was feeling really good about this until a young uh youth climate activist said what about the bloody batteries and i was like oh okay well you know you know you got to weigh these things up don't you and i made that decision i know evs are better than petrol cars long in terms of the life cycle i know that so i've stuck with that decision but you know even Gosh, even taking a, you know, a cloth bag shopping, you know, walking more, cycling more, growing kai, just getting out into nature, reconnecting, because there's a lot of our issues around. We've had this disconnection from nature. We're not connected anymore. Even COVID's part of all of that. Um, you know, and it's a matter of supporting your community, sharing resources. I, I share stuff with my neighbors all the time. We swap tools. Like, why would I go and buy a lawnmower? I just borrow one off my neighbor. You know what I mean? It's just about having sharing stuff and and taking action together collaborating and then it all adds up and we have to make changes so yeah that was a long answer wasn't it <laughs> i think that beautifully summed up the day though maybe just one quick note on that like carbon's expensive so you know with your organizations when you look at your you know like your expenses um you know when you're looking at fuel when you're looking at electricity and travel and things like that um you know that, that money you're spending has a lot of carbon embedded in it so if you know if you spend a little bit less in any of those areas that you know are covered in the tool of electricity you know fuel travel um freight and waste you're lowering your carbon footprint and you know you're doing your organization a favor as well by um, um keeping those ex expenses down as much as you can thanks simon we're just about out of time so i'll give dennis 30 seconds to wrap up and then we'll close in Karakia. Thanks, Danny, and thank you uh, everyone for coming along. I really appreciate the chance to present. Hopefully you see some value in this in terms of that collective action that we all can take uh, and learn from. That's really important in terms of what we're trying to achieve here. So uh, have a good think about that. Um, this is not the last time that we'll come together, hopefully. Uh, we, we're going to run this um, uh, 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 kopapa, um, along uh, over the next period of time and we have uh, the next one lined up and wrong. I just wonder if you wanted to spend 10 seconds telling us what the next session will be on because uh, it was quite interesting I think and um, then we'll close up there. Yeah, thank you Dennis. So um, there's been some conversations underway with um, Para Kore Marae uh, Jackie Forbes and also um, so she's wanting to share with um, everyone around um, what kaitiakitanga is in te ao Māori and then also um, unpacking what um, it looks like to um, 
look at some decolonization um, type thinking around um, kaitiaki tanga um, in terms of um, iwi and hapu responsibility and how we can work alongside um, other organizations to share that mātauranga Māori, Māori knowledge. And I know that she's also um, wanting to connect um, with Joe and also with Rachel um, at that session, but I'm it's still um, the planning is still underway. Yeah, and then we also um, have another exciting opportunity that we want to um, share with everyone as well as around the um, work that Impact Hub Waikato are doing, um, in particular with their um, climate oh, climate a thon <laughs> kaupapa, which um, we're really really excited to. Um, to share as well. Sorry if I've got that wrong, Emma. <laughs> okay, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for that. Dennis. Thanks, okay. Lauren. And, and hopefully that is a, a sort of a, a little bit around um, that collective action, but that different thinking as well. Also, certainly from that Te Māori view, which will be very interesting uh, that we all could learn from. Uh, and, and implement potentially as well. And if you've got any great stories that you want to share and be part of, then please let uh, Rongo or, or Danny know um, so that we can um, put that in front of everyone as well. But again, that's my 30 second rant, Danny. Thank you. Awesome. And just want to say thank you to all of you joining and Simon and Rachel for your time and sharing your knowledge with us today. So with that being said, we have our karakia whakamutanga, kuamutu amato mahi, mō wā, manakitia mai mā katoa, omato hoa, omato whano, ayo ki te orangi. Thanks for joining us today. Have a good afternoon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.